Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to It's Not Table Talk. I'm your host, as always, Sean Ambrosino. With me is VP Chris Waldrum. You. And with us today is, all right, I'm going to need your help again, QC... And regulatory. And regulatory. And regulatory <laughs> Man- mastermind. Manager, yeah. mastermind. Eli Orozco. <laughs> but there's, there's something that makes Eli a little bit more, I don't want to say valuable, but something a little bit more... Uh, Interesting than just his position. I like valuable. It sounds nice. <laughs> valuable, <laughs> interesting. Eli's like been here for like what is it? Eight 40, years. Forty-seven now? years. Now? Eighty-seven like, like years. When you carry the two, and you, and back in my day, <laughs> eight years. So you've seen a lot, literally a lot with not only with the with Nutrix but with the industry. Like, like, yeah, trends, different things that have come out, different ingredients, different products. Like, I remember like the DHA craze, I remember the Devastate when that came out. Like, that was like one of the top pre's that everyone was trying to, yeah, boy, freaking with the sweet tea flavors and like all the different trends that came out. It's it's been like a whirlwind just in the industry, you know. When I first started, I came straight from Vitamin Shop, and first of all, just Getting into like a supplement company was probably one of the coolest things in my life at that time. You know, I was like 24, trying to finally get into something more than just retail, you know, and then having the opportunity to come up with Nutrex was probably like a huge highlight. So, what you were in Vitamin Shop before you said? Yeah. Or, Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. that yeah. Yes. So, I used to be at Vitamin Shop. Um, I was there for about a year, I think. And we actually had a couple people from my same store join Nutrex later on, ironically too. So we had a few people move from like store manager jobs, assistant manager to come on and jump onto our inside sales team too. So you hear that vitamin shop employees, right? You play your cards right. (laughs) You find the right (laughs) red. Might just get a chance. You might get a chance. So um so that's that's kinda rad. I mean I well it is rad that you you've was it something like when you started at, at Vitamin Shop? Was it, you weren't thinking of oh I'm going to go work for a supplement company? You were just like Mm-mm. no, I, I did it because uh, when I first started at Vitamin Shop, I wanted to do it because I loved just the whole vibe of you know natural products, uh, holistic medicine, medicinal medicine, just health and wellness, just in general. You know, I grew up pretty much in a household that you know welcomed anything on that field, like natural medicines, herbs, exercise. Uh, I mean, I came out the womb pretty much almost playing a soccer ball, you know, being Latin. My dad was always in the soccer fields. We would always go. And I grew up playing sports, primarily soccer first. And as I got older, I tried to dwell into other things, weightlifting. I did some swim. I did rugby for a little bit. Got some exposure to that. So for me, you know, not only trying to be fit, healthy was a huge thing but trying to learn more on like how to do that with what products how do i just besides just eating i mean that's important have nutrition but what else can i do on top of that so i would always try to find more knowledge and i remember back in the day bodybuilding.com was one of those mainstream just archives of information i'd be on there all the time trying to look up new newest article or like look up new newest information new. yeah you know or anything i could find and ironically i had taken some nutrix products when i was younger our lipo 6 product when we still had dmaa and nice. our hemorrhage yeah that's that stuff got me dropping weight fast when it still had dmaa like i was working at a dunkin donuts ironically enough just <laughs> pounding down you know donut holes and sandwiches and everything i wonder how many calories somebody that works at a dunkin donuts eats just passively like not even thinking probably. about it like not you know. even think about it you're working you're working a shift yeah, just, you, a you, you, you yeah, a, just a donut you pop a couple donut holes here and there and next oh, yeah. thing you know you're you're uh yeah, I wash it down with like a super creamed up coffee or who knows what, you yep, know. Yep. Um, but I remember literally I'd be going into work in the morning shift and popping some lipos and be sweating, first of all, just geeked out of my mind and just dropping weight. I think in the first week it was almost like five pounds and then like another couple pounds later. But I was doing it routinely and I'm on my feet. So I'm like zooming all around and doing so many things, hyped up on lipo. So it did a really great job, ironically, and that's how I got my exposure uh, to Nutrex. And then the Hemorrhage, I remember one of the last shows here in Orlando for the Europa show. Um, we had a booth, and some of the old reps that aren't here now were there. And I remember I got my like big ass t shirt on, and I'm just like trying to get samples everywhere. And I see Nutrex, and I'm like, oh snap. 
So I go and I see like a bunch of hemorrhoid samples and I look and it's still the one with DMA. I guess what was going on was that they were trying to get rid of it because DMA was pretty much going to be wiped. So they had stock and they're like, hey, just, you know, take as much as you want. So they're just handing it to nice. everybody. Load up. I take some. I do my round like behind the booth and then come back around like, oh, man, more samples. Oh, I love this stuff. So I did like five probably trips just so, to that so he's, booth. he's still using yeah, it yeah, a couple yeah, years yeah, supply yeah, yeah lifetime yeah, yeah. supply i think i got a jar of my desk too actually like old hemorrhage <laughs> just just in case just I need in something. case dude you never know it's no, yeah. vacuum sealed so 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 question what what was the what was the pathway from vitamin shop to nutrex was it was it from a rep like you met somebody yeah and yeah actually so we had an international rep here he had been here for quite some time his name was john and he actually would come in pretty often always bought like natural stuff like garlic uh, a couple antioxidants stuff for his heart and anxiety yeah, probably, pretty, probably. <laughs> Blood pressure. <laughs> And he was, he would always come, super nice guy, super just humble, would talk to you about anything. And one day he was just talking to me about, I forget what, but then he segued to, hey, we actually have something happening at Nutrex. We're opening up an inside sales department. He's like, would you want to maybe like have your name thrown in there and see what happens? And I was like, I mean, yeah, why not? I mean, yeah, cool yeah. job or like, you know, a supplement, again, Work never knew about supplement company. company. Exactly. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, like definitely throw yeah, it in there. You're like, I'll never pay for hemo rage again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <What? for> real. <laughs> yeah. So long story short, you know, I gave him my info, I sent him my resume. Uh, they talked to the person that was heading, <coughs> spearheading the inside sales. <coughs> and eventually, I get a call and the manager was like, hey, John passed on your information. Would you be able to come in for an interview? So I came in, did my thing, you know, look good, look sharp, have my knowledge all together. Clean haircut. Yeah, literally. 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 It looks great. I had to schmooze them, you know what I mean? And it was funny too, because we actually, when you did an interview here, you would have to do a test which was like a product knowledge test. Like, do you know about macros? Do you know about workouts? What do you do to target this? It was pretty interesting. And obviously I got the job. You crushed it. Yeah, I was like, yes. They're like, finally, one smart person <laughs> out of all these people that are just like, duh. Someone knows how to yeah. spell words or do things. See, see, I'm more of a Vince Vaughn character where like I bullshit my way through. And I would be like, <laughs> yeah. well, you know, you really don't need macros because Macros are just the opposite of micros. They're just and we're all made up of micros. They don't mean anything. <laughs> yeah, they're just like an idea. But I did the interview. We we got started, and pretty much everything has been history. I've been here for eight years, almost nine now. Just and what? And, but you've segued through positions. Yeah. yeah. So did inside sales first, then I segued to customer service to doing it as a two man one slash two man operation. Um, we had somebody that was doing it first segue to doing social media. So that whole department was just left unattended. So they asked me what I want to do, you know, take it over, try to help out, carry that. Um, so I told them, yeah, like, why not? So I did that and I was, you know, doing the chats, doing the emails, doing all that stuff, helping with social media, trying to be like, hey, do you guys need content? Or here's some ideas, what do you guys think we should do? So it was, I always tried to have my hand in a little bit in every cookie jar because for me personally, I think it's important to know where you're working at and know what's going on. You know what I mean? I don't want to be just kind of blindly just like doing my job Blissfully and that's ignorant. it. And yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And then just not caring. I mean, I work here. This is something that provides for me and I care about my team and I care about what I represent or what we represent also. So I would, you know, talk with Mike Brooks about, you know, different postings and work with our manager for customer service to come up with different sales ideas or different stacks and different promos here and there. So it's just more than just, you know, answering emails and having product knowledge and telling people, hey, your order's on the well, way. You're, talk you're talking to the people, man. Yeah. When you're in customer service, you're talking to the people. It's, it's, it's an incredible line opportunity to find yeah. out what, what they need, what they want. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's like, come on, dude. That's, that, that's it's no such an awesome. Data. Yeah. No better data. Yeah, it, it was, I think it was nice because it was a mixture of what I was doing before 
put it a little bit different because I mean I'm in the office now, mm-hmm. but it still gave me that opportunity to still talk to people, inform them about the brand, maybe our products, why we're different, or what's good about Outlift versus something else out there, you know, or seafood or whatever the product they're taking. So it was nice to put everything that I've learned, just not even from the shop, but over my lifetime of learning about different products, nutrition, and sharing it still with people, you know, so it was kind of like a best of both worlds opportunity. Um, And then slowly but surely after I was there for about, I think a couple years again, or about a year and a half, um, our operations manager actually came to me and was asking me if I actually wanted to help out with some quality stuff there. So I was doing very little, just kind of like some uh, overall product inspections, things like that, nothing too crazy. And then lo and behold, as you know more business came they needed more hands that operations department needed more people they started asking me hey would you want to maybe do more stuff than more of the quality stuff help us out here because we only have I think it was at the time like one or two people actually so then I eventually jumped into there finally jumped on as quality uh, specialist I believe probably around 20 2018 but I was hybridizing for a while and then fully transition to quality in 2018 and then now I've just been doing that ever since um, and then obviously the regulatory part slowly came after that as well you know as now I is that, that that to me the regulatory part sounds like a friggin nightmare it kind of is especially with international I mean things are changing literally all the time something today might not be relevant you know, theobromine just is a yeah. pharmaceutical now in a couple literally yeah so theobromine now cocoa extracts seen as a pharmaceutical in some countries before like a couple of days ago Fucking that wasn't even a conversation chocolate. wait yeah. wait so now chocolate is seen as a pharmaceutical in a, in a couple countries in a couple yeah, countries not, not <laughs> yeah, something like that yeah so i run it again that's why it's kind of like uh, almost a real pain in the ass to do regulatory work because again you have to somewhat stay up to date or hope that you can stay relevant with all that information that changes again from today to maybe an hour from now or the next day it'll change literally and there's not like there's a regulatory website that'll tell you uh, no no and if you want that you have to find the regulatory website for that country right 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 but that's what i'm saying here's like, the thing what if it's for the middle east hopefully you can read sanskrit or arabic because if not you're got to somehow find a that. different source yeah you know what i mean so or you're copy and paste <laughs> yeah. there's no like centralized meanwhile news google trends is like uh i don't know what you're trying to say here <laughs> yeah it's like this one's what you then you copy and paste it goes Contact information. What? No, 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 yeah. no! Contact I don't care. This number. No, I, can't. I, I don't need that number. Just give me what I'm supposed to know. Yeah. You're like, aren't you American? I'm like, yes, but I need to know what this says, literally. So, the QC, the regulatory go, it's it's a good mixture because it goes hand in hand, literally. What we do here has to translate somewhat in every other country, you know, and that's why it's nice too because I get exposure to different countries' regulations, information. What does well over there? What maybe do people want more of, or what do they hate? Like what flavors are good? So that goes into ideas for marketing too, or maybe new product development. Hey, we should look into these because they're trending. Or hey, how come no one's done this flavor? Mm -hmm. And these combinations sounds pretty good. So that's why it's kind of like a jack of all trades, yeah, position for me, even though it's just one title. I've had so much exposure, literally almost every department here, whether it's them asking me for help, I go and give them help, or I just go and ask questions and try to help out just because I want to, you know? Again, it goes back to this is where I work, this is part of who I am. I love the industry, I love what it represents, not just sports, but just health and wellness in general, and I want to put that energy into what I'm doing. You know what I mean? What is besides? Like, I was gonna ask you, but because uh, what is the craziest like rule or law that you've seen come across, come down the pike? Besides chocolate becoming a theobroma, yeah, constituent uh, of chocolate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Besides that becoming a pharmaceutical, was there something you uh, went? Wait, 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 wait! Like made you go? That's crazy. Uh, one, I wouldn't <laughs> say. Mm, I'm trying to think. I would say one specifically is something like Australia, where your product, like composition, caffeine, can't be higher than about five percent of your That's total a percentage of the total. Net yeah, weight. the total actual formula. <laughs> so I mean, whatever composition you have, the amount of weight of actual caffeine can't equal out to more than five percent. Yeah, like a hundred milligrams for twenty gram scoop. So you gotta have like a protein scoop. 
to get something hard hitting it, and there's probably even a threshold there mm -hmm. where it can't go over. Yeah, they're yeah. regulating so hard. They, so it's about weight there. Net weight, yeah. Yeah, like about a your percentage of how much your product, how much of this ingredient makes the composition of your product. So if you have, I don't know, like a 20 gram scoop or whatever, if you have, I don't know, X amount of milligrams of caffeine, has to be only you know, like from top to bottom, that whole composition equals out 100, your caffeine content can't be higher than 5%. Mm -hmm. If it is, it's axed. You can't yeah. get it through. They have a different regulatory TGA. Yeah. That's really difficult. And they're pushing pharmaceutical too, like pushing towards that direction, just like Canada and whatnot. Yeah. That, and Canada is another beast too. That's why a lot of people are, one, really hard to sell in Canada. Um, and I know right now, actually, a bunch of different brands are actually coming together to fight the Canada's the legislation. Uh, legal, yeah, the yeah. legislation that's going on. So because they are putting some type of roadblocks, I can't remember what it is specifically, but more like red tape, more restrictions, almost to the point where the amount of testing you have to do, the amount of loops you have to go through, doesn't even I'm equate to real sales anymore. So, yeah. so let's let's put our tinfoil hats on our collective tinfoil oh, hats. My favorite time. <laughs> All right. Yes. Now, do you think that this is happening because of a push from pharmaceuticals, from big pharma, to get rid of the stuff that we could take to make us better, feel better, do better, whatever. Oh, I'd love to hear Eli's input on Brain? that. Maybe it's aliens, because aren't they just popping up now all of a sudden? Most Actually, the, I just read the Surprise! report. <laughs> aliens are here. I, just, like, I just read the report. They said <laughs> most of the things that we think are UFOs are not UFOs. Yeah. Uh, but, but... Did, satellites. Why, weather balloons. Yeah, yeah. satellites, <laughs> weather balloons. So, but it's like, it, there's got to be a reason, and it can't just be for mm. the well-being of the people, right? But a marriage between Big Pharma... Mm -hmm. And the government trying to find a way to, hey, let's get more money in our pockets. That would never happen. Hmm. Like, they care about us, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They want to have all types of open access. I mean, it makes sense to me. I don't know what, what how it sounds to you guys, yeah. but it's like, like that. Does, it seems weird, especially for Canada. I mean, yeah. it's not like Canada is socialist or communist. <laughs> not no, not at all. Trudeau. Hmm. Well, I, not, we just I was, got canceled. I was I was <laughs> gonna say it's not like they're some small country yeah. far away from the U.S. that doesn't mm. have access to information not a third and all that country stuff. At all, yeah. So it's like there's got to be something. Like, what are they seeing that we're not seeing? Mm -hmm. That's uh, well, the U.S. is kind of crazy yeah. just in, in itself. <laughs> You know, if you think about it, U.S. is kind of like the wild, wild west with products in general. I mean, most of the stuff that we use or we have access to, most countries are like, get that poison out of here. Right. Every single know, country out there, basically. Literally, you know, yeah. Like, I mean, so we actually have more resources than most countries in general. So I think they – it's it's kind of weird because, I mean, sweeteners, different ingredients, the potencies of the ingredients. We have anywhere from a 1% extract of something to My 100. body, my choice, bro. Exactly. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so it's we have all more power than most places in access to products yeah. and everybody wants our products in a sense because i mean look at yohimbe the fact that you can buy yohimbe here when other places consider that a pharmaceutical Bang, drug yeah. you know is crazy you know it's an aphrodisiac but it's a pharmaceutical we got the good shit <laughs> yeah literally know? and even america has the dacia act which would pretty mm -hmm. much eliminate a lot of the ingredients that we're already utilizing so there's there's so many like gray areas that we get to kind of exist in that are compliant get to, to you know mm. do the little, doesn't mean we're doing the anything little dance nefarious, but yeah. we could get into the pharmaceutical <laughs> conversation later i don't want you i don't want to feel uncomfortable <laughs> talking about that kind of stuff that'll be pot next podcast the next part. I, but it just pharmaceutical takeover but, it, but it's like it, it makes sense you know and we're we're seeing it we're seeing this big push yeah. we know they're in the government's pockets yeah, we're told not to believe our eyes, our ears, though. You know, yeah, yeah, don't yeah. believe what you see. I don't wanted to see mean. that uh, that Netflix special about that Viking because I'm sure that kind of plays in a little bit. Yeah. You know? Have you seen the that? The Shackler family. Yeah, I'm yep, like, yep. so it's not probably a far fetched idea that somehow pharma isn't controlling things oh, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I mean, hundred percent. I wouldn't doubt it. You know, nutraceutical and pharma. I mean, where do pharmaceutical drugs come from? Plant extracts Plant and things yeah. like that. Like it start, it starts somewhere, right? Exactly. Yep. It comes from the ground essentially, and they just synthesize it mm -hmm. or you know concentrate trade and that's basically what a drug yeah. is change a molecule so they could just trademark it or license it mm -hmm. you know which is just if it comes from the ground everybody should be able to use it that's that's my my thought process whatever grows out of the ground how could you ban it especially because the herbs or medicines have been here for hundreds of millions of years longer than human beings depending on what you believe 
if it came before us, how, how are we going to say that like, you can't use that? You know, yeah. magical how, mushrooms how you gonna, and how you, yeah. all that stuff. How are you going to tell Mother Nature she's illegal? <laughs> right. yeah, how are you going to do that? She's, no. she, Next <laughs> thing, water's restricted. Yeah, right. you know, yeah, for real. <laughs> can't even breathe. Like, that's not <laughs> your air, you yeah. know? Well, well, you got to pay per minute that's per coming. breath. That's coming. Oh, yeah, yeah, we got dude. carbon taxes They're, they're already coming. buying all our water rights, you know? All the, the last, you know, freshwater wells and whatnot are all mm. being bought by Nestle, by Bill Gates. Nestle's Legitimately, so they're buying water rights, and it's like, well, water's like a, a human right. Yeah, you know, but uh, just like bathrooms, the like, nah, yes, we don't do that here. You don't need that. Yeah, you dude. know. Okay, we don't have to get too off. off. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> so I'm sitting here going, so, oh, yeah, yeah, we're turning yeah, this yeah. into. So, a so one thing I was really interested in because you have a very similar pathway to me inside of this because I worked at GNC. Then I moved up to a, uh, a locally owned store, which mm-hmm. was great because they could sell anything and GNC only could sell what GNC yeah, sells. Yeah, yeah. So that was a good experience seeing other brands I'd never seen before. But my entryway was meeting a rep that worked with Europa. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I wanted to get out of that store. I wanted more. I was 25 years old. And she's like, hey, there's uh, VPX is hiring, Dimatize is hiring, a couple others are hiring. Like, do you want me to put your name? And then I was like, Pfft. This is a dream come true. Yeah. So at GNC, I would look at these. I'm like, I can't, I can't even imagine working for a company. Yeah, and you have this you idea know? of like, oh man, like all this crazy stuff must be happening behind closed doors of like experiments or like research yeah, and things like that. And yeah, literally, like, and, shit. They got, like <laughs> hot, and hot chicks only, yeah. only hot chicks and, and, and like. Uh, Doctor's coats, no... Like Rocky nothing and the else Russian. Else underneath, else underneath, yeah. Yeah. Like Rocky and the Russian where they're just injecting you. Yeah, like, well, dude, yeah. You'll be like, get this guy beat Zero, up and, immediately. And all we, all we have is, is the hog and the Speedo over here on a, on a longboard. <laughs> you know? That's the extent. <laughs> That's cool. It's the same kind of pathway, mm-hmm. though. So you were like, I mean, that must have been a magical moment for you to be working at Vitamin Shop and like, I want more because, you know, you're the type of person you just you want to continue to excel. And right. I, I appreciate that a ton. But having that like moment of like, dude, I really work for Nutrix. I had mm-hmm. to be special. Yeah, it was like I said, a surreal moment because like similar to what you said, you look at these brands or you look at these products on the wall, and first of all, if you're you know someone that works out or just loves nature, uh, natural products or whatnot, you're like, man, I can imagine being a part of either making something like this or spreading the word of why these things are so great for you or making your own version. Like I said, that was kind of why I wanted to, you know, maybe pursue something, but I just didn't know how. And the universe provided, ironically enough, somehow. So I was more than ecstatic because I wanted to do something different. I didn't want to just like be there, sell every product, you know, whatever, go and then have my day. I wanted to be behind the scenes to know more about what goes into these products. I want to know more about what goes into just this industry and somehow just blend into it and be a part of it more than I can, you know? So that's why for me, you know, the quality side of looking at the products, looking about new things and innovations that happen, look at other countries and look at what they're doing or what they're not doing. You know, is it beneficial? Is it not? Should we follow that type of trend? should we not I get such exposure from two different sides and it's kind of a whirlwind again because you have to keep these things in your mind all the time every day and be like hey we're coming out with this new product and I'm like hey you guys can't use this because if you want to sell internationally it's not going to sell there or you can't get it through yeah it's going to be axed dead in the water right away so conversations like that are important for me and it's important to have because if we want to branch out somewhere that maybe we never have we need to know what's going on mm-hmm. there. You know what I mean? So, and then the other part, again, trending flavors or trending types of delivery systems. What do they look for? What do they look for in, verf, uh, in reference of packaging? In reference of, hey, uh, we don't want these sweeteners or you can't use monk fruit because it's not even used that much in other countries. They don't even know what it is. Mm-hmm. You know, but we have it in our plant protein, but they won't take it because they don't know what monk fruit is, even though it's like a natural sweetener product. You know what I mean? New capsules recently, right? Moving away from black capsules yeah, into dyes. all veggie caps or chlorophyll so, caps. So, ironically, a lot of countries, even though um, some of these capsules have dyes, of course, like Red 40 or whatever, there's such minuscule amounts, like less than a microgram or whatever. But they do it where you have to present your information in a format in a sense of a kilogram of product, let's say. So, you have your capsule or your product your active formula weighs i don't know 300 gram 300 milligrams you have to do a specific ratio where you have to multiply that to look like a kilogram of product Mm -hmm. what does a kilogram of total product look like in reference of weight 
if your dyes are above, I don't know, 500 milligrams per kilogram of powder or your formula, you can't get somewhere because now you're restricted. That's too much. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. 500 milligrams per kilogram of finished product. Mm -hmm. Too much, and you can't get, get in the country. Uh, the Mexico, cocoa, you get taxed differently for cocoa in Mexico. Well, here, here, wait, wait, wait. Let's put that in pounds for because there's going to be a lot of people that aren't going to be able to. So like, if, if what's a kilogram? What's a kilogram? Yeah, what's a what, what, thousand what, grams. What, 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 yeah, a thousand grams or two and a half pounds. <laughs> right, essentially. right, right. So two and a half pounds, and it can't weigh. So the dye couldn't weigh. You it. can't have more than five hundred milligrams of dye in two and a half pounds of finished good product mm -hmm. because if you do, that's considered too much, and then you're not going to get into the country. Crazy. Different restrictions Crazy. like that are one all out of over ten the place. capsules we could have colored. You know, they, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so like even for chlorophyll or green capsules, that's actually still a restriction too in that sense. Really? Yeah. So some places, even though chlorophyll is still from algae and things like that, um, they still don't allow it in certain thresholds. Ironically enough, too. So it's probably again, like healthy for you. Chlorophyll yeah, is yeah, great for you. Probably you know? great for you. Yeah, yeah, but they're yeah. like, we don't need them to be too Helps healthy. Helps you convert sunlight to, you know, farts. I don't know. Well, you, that's why you gotta like do that sun <laughs> sunbathing outside where you're like, well, the air, whatever, right? Get all your balls in the sun, dude. <laughs> <laughs> what do they call it again? It's something uh, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember what it is. There's a name. Yeah. There is a name for it. Episode two point five thousand. Yeah, get get in the ready. Future. We're yeah, gonna we'll do. We'll do a whole episode of it. I'll show you. We'll have demonstration. Yeah. We'll put up that tutorial next episode. I mean, I. I mean, I am pretty flexible. I mean, yeah, that's that's a trick. I mean, in jeans. <laughs> yeah, you know, are they stretchy jeans? Like, man, so so since you've been here <coughs> for a long period of time, and you've seen different maybe moments of evolution, and maybe some moments of regression. What's your current like interpretation or your feel about where we are right now and where we were maybe three, four years ago? I think we're on a good track. I remember when I first started, I mean, Nutrix was still big. I mean, we're a legacy brand. So, you know, it's something to be proud of, but the problem comes, I mean, there's over hundreds and hundreds of brands out there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's probably a new one that pops up every other day or so. Not only just here, but let's say internationally too, imagine that. So you always gotta keep that in mind and battle against that Goliath in terms of how do you set yourself apart? How innovation, are you gonna, you yeah. know, innovation, mm -hmm. flavorings, I mean, all things that people are doing just to get a little bit ahead or a little bit of recognition versus somebody else. I think what sets us apart is like the amount of products we can pump out, the availability of different resources of suppliers, ingredients, um, just the net we have even worldwide of where you can find our products. Mm -hmm. I mean, not a lot of brands could probably say they're over in over 30 countries. 30 N countries, guys. That's 30 a big plus actually and still deal. counting. Yeah. So just so you know. That's a massive fucking deal cuz people people will correlate success to just domestic cuz that's mm -hmm. a, they're only, they're ignorant to the whole picture. Mm -hmm. And the reality is it's like we're in places that you don't even know exist on a map. It's almost a quarter that's almost a quarter, right? Is it? I mean, am I wrong here? There's 180 That was bad geography. I don't know how there's many There's 180 are. countries I think total. We're in oh, your guess is as good as mine, but we're almost there. Learn something new, guys. No, not a quarter. Quarter's bad, so that was bad math. Yeah. Because that would be a quarter, so a fifth would Bum. be 150, a sixth. So a, a sixth. sixth. Yeah, there yeah. You go. We're at like hey, a sixth of the world. We got there pretty quick, collectively, you know, <laughs> yeah. putting our minds together. Quick math, kind of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's impressive. So yeah. sorry. Okay. But, sorry. but again, the, the, the net that we have just in different countries is great for us, and uh, the fact that we're just always trying to just find what What's new? What's well, how can we improve? You know, I think the fact that the amount of products we've just innovated over the years, trying to do the clinically dosed products, we had a whole line where all your products were clinically dosed. You know, we before it was cool. Yeah, exactly. Was cool. You know, and Outlift was one of the first ones to do for that for pre workouts, and we did it for a fat burner. We did it for a post workout shake, uh, where it was just like cluster dextrin, a lot of EAAs, things like that. I still have some. It's one of my favorite products. Yeah, that, that the strawberry made. was bomb. It was one of the best flavors for sure. So things like that. We're have such availability and such connections that just go unnoticed. You know, in the sense that I think that's why we're kind of like a sleeper, in a sense. Sleeping giant. And even though yes. people might think, you know, oh, new tricks, not, you better watch out. Mm -hmm. Because when you least expect it, that's when the rug gets pulled from right under you. Just said on my story today. I was like, people are sleeping. 
the people that pay attention, they know what the fuck is going on. They know what's happening right now. Yeah. And like I said, it's just the fact that, again, what blow, blows my mind is the fact that we're in so many places, so many countries. You know, you go to Latin America, we're one of the top brands. You know, it's Lipo, Lipo, or Nutrex. We're like rock stars over there. You mm-hmm. know, it's crazy. It's crazy the type of just love they have for Nutrex. And it's because, again, we, you know, try to pump out, you know, marketing. We try to put out, you know, good stuff for our customers there. They want the real stuff too that is found here in the u.s so yeah i don't know it's i'm excited to see what direction nutrix is going to be in like even like two three years five years or whatever because i mean i hope i'm still on for the ride because i love what i do you know it brings some type of uh satisfaction to me mm-hmm. you know and i just want to always keep growing in this in this company and just in this field you know i want to learn more about nutrition all the time i want to learn what's how can you improve yourself and i think we need to i think that's one piece that we need to bring back a little bit have more information to provide to customers or whoever wants um to learn you know value exactly you know you need to have a like a hub for people to come to and be like hey i want to learn about xyz exercise or nutrition or ingredient you know or uh, what's this hog i keep hearing about you know like where can i find this and i think that's something that we need to do for sure and i know we're gonna do it you know it just takes time and planning but once we can build that for sure structure of a camaraderie of a hub for customers and stuff i think that is going to be like a huge nail in like our success for sure community yeah Yeah, build back the community you want you want to know that people got your back or like people want to follow you for a reason not just because your products either taste good or are great but because you bring some type of value helping it's a purpose yeah our job is to make people's lives better yeah Yeah. bottom line percent Literally, whether it's you get a better workout and you feel better in the gym or you get better recovery because our protein tastes awesome and it's good for you, whatever the case may be, we need to bring that value in every product that we pump out or in anything that we do. You know, and that's why I say I take things serious and I hope everybody does too. You know, because one, this is something that people are giving your, their money for. You know, protein and stuff ain't ain't pretty cheap. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And two, like you take this product, you ingest this, so you better have like pride and some type of like umph to your product you know what i mean so that's why i say i want that energy to be brought all the time into the brand into our products and everything that we do eli cares eli that's cares what, that's what and, i'm hearing that's and I, hearing. I heard I some I, I heard something eli said before and i want to kind of go back to it eli said he wanted to create products like be a part of the creation is there something that we're we don't have at the moment that you would love to see Mm, probably a few things i mean for give me one the joint product nootropic product a greens product probably of the of those but like what's your like what's your top like if you get one what would be something that you would personally take like eli would take this every single day and it benefit me what would that be probably like a nootropic coffee product or something something i can add to that you know what I mean? Because, I mean, I think... Nootropic creamer you put in a coffee? Yeah, which, I mean, some people have done something like EAAs or BCA creamers, and that was kind of like a gross product. Yeah, that was I tried, sports. Yeah, I, f- I tried a few people that tried that, and it wasn't that great. But I, we tried a... Um, a nootropics a oil? Would, would it be like an MCT oil, but like a nootropics version? You could do that, technically. Like some type of creamer, like MCT oil creamer, some non-dairy creamer, and just yeah. mix some things in there. So that way it disperses easily. Yeah. Um, but we did a project where we developed a Amazon-specific product, like a pre-workout. And it had a few different things, like some mushroom powders, and active was in there too. Here you did that? Yeah, we, we developed it, like me and Felix developed it. It was really good. I mean, pretty basic profile, but for the ingredients that were in there, they were dosed right, they kick, they kick really good, and it gives you the performance benefits that you want in just like a little, pro- little product, 30 servings. Um, but obviously stuff like the mushroom is just really hard to mask. To mask, and, you yeah. Know, the taste is Probably pretty- wasn't as popular back then as it is now too. Right. Because you have like Four Sigmatic, mm-hmm. which has the most expensive bougie stuff that my wife buys. I'm like, oh, just buy the raw material and mix it yourself. Yeah. Like, but have you seen those? Yeah. Adorable looking packets. Good for them because they're a big company. But now maybe it would be a better time to mm-hmm. consider doing something like that. Yeah. And I mean, mushrooms are really hot right well, now. That's why mushrooms go best in capsules because you don't have shrooms. To, there's, no, there's no flavor. You right. just pop them in. But my, my some produce. mushrooms, though, like you got to find the right flavor. Like fruit flavors probably don't work. No. Nope. But that's why I say something like something that's more dark roast or coffee like mm. because 
uh, mushrooms especially like something like reishi mushrooms and things like that yeah. they have more of like a even though it is somewhat dirtish it does have a little bit of like that cocoa-ish yeah, flavor to it kinda, you yeah. know so it's a little bit bitter and like a little bit dark uh like dirtish but when you mix it with coffee or some type of like mocha or vanilla flavor, you wouldn't even think that's Masks in there. It really well. It like is almost gone. Mm-hmm. So I think something like that for just overall like focus, breathing, immune support. You got all that when really you're just putting in something for your coffee. You know, and who doesn't who doesn't drink coffee at this point in t- in day in every morning? Weirdos, pumpkin yeah. spice latte if, every if, if morning. I don't drink a video, coffee, I don't trust you. Yeah, I yeah. saw a video of like this CrossFitter, and she was like, "Oh, when you go into the gym, you tell people you don't drink coffee," and everyone was like, "This." I'm like, "Yeah, I would be the same way." Yeah, I'd be yep. like, "How do you even wake up and you're just like, whew, like energized?" I, for me, it's not even. I don't even take coffee for the effect. energy. I just love the taste. The yeah. taste and placebo it, effect at it, this it point. Takes, it takes me back to being five years old. My mm. grandmother used to make me coffee. <laughs> five years old at coffee? <laughs> yeah. but I didn't have that until my be, teens, It, it would be like milk, mostly milk. Yeah. yeah. Splash of coffee. With some whiskey in there, too. <laughs> and I, like, sh- but, you know. Give this to I little want- Shawnee. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's. Actually, when That's I was what put teething, the in his chest yeah. back then, when I was mean? teething, my mom did put whiskey on oh, me yeah. for vodka. Honey yeah. and whiskey. Honey put it whiskey. on my teeth. But we did that one. Actually, we were young, and um, we had, like, sore throats or, like, yeah. kind of like Soothes a it, congestion or whatever. Yeah, like, my mom, she would have, like, a little cap, and she's like, shoot it back, and it'll just burn, but, like, clears all that up. I thought you, know? you said you were Latino. Where's the Where's the Vicks? Bro, Vicks all day. <laughs> You're sick. You don't feel good. Your stomach you hurts. Talk about a sports Vicks. You know what I mean. Dude, all you gotta do put that down. Train, put that this. down. Bro. That's, that's dilators, coming up. Dilators, Latin America is gonna get that. Guarantee. We need to. We need to take that's that over. Bad. That's not a bad idea. I mean, we have the Life of Six Defining Gel. We could have one like for a respiratory system. You know what I mean? Shh. Write it Should down. I- I, I, I take Vicks right in the nose. I just put it right oh, in my nose. God. Bro, <laughs> you've never been in my position where you take a glop and you eat it, dude. No way. <laughs> oh, I've never done that. No. I've never it's eaten. not huge, but it was a glop. Yeah. I remember sometimes just to kind of get like that good breathing going. <laughs> Holy <laughs> Yeah, that's hardcore. Might be onto something here. You that's know what hardcore. I mean? That's what I'm saying. Lens, we don't mess around with that Vix. That's like the holy grail for us. Put a little bit it's on your feet with some you know socks. I mean? hey, yo, yeah. yeah, I feel this way. Vix. So I feel yep. that way. Vix. My head hurts. Put some Vix on your temples. Yeah. Or like, All right, I can't breathe. Put some Vix on on your feet and your chest. And just sleep with it all over your body at that point. Oh, yeah. there's, um, there's been like joint relief creams that have used similar technology to what's in our defining gel for that. You know, like an mm. icy hot kind of thing. And well, that's cap- something that would be pretty... is always great for joints, right? Like... I don't know. Isn't that for cuts? Apparently, now that here capsaicin. Yeah, apparently I saw a video. Uh, saw a oh video of someone talking about I this lady who so recommended pepper spray and like who recommended here, honey. Yeah, she rec- I think she's like a naturopath, and she was talking about how she was with one of her friends and she had a cut, and she told her put capsaicin powder on there, and she was like, well, "Are you sure?" She's like, "It'll burn, but it'll stop the bleeding." Apparently, it works. Right. I don't know. I'm not gonna find it. Try and find out. It, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather just put some alcohol. It probably just stings the same or something like that. But yeah, apparently, if you have <laughs> yeah, cups, sound, cups, 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 a coffee drink and some sort of innovative Vix rub. Yeah, there we go. Put good. that in the works. We're working on that right now. Done. I love that, man. Well, dude, we've been we've been talking for a while here, so I might that be time. That went by fast. That went by yeah, fast. Went by, really went by quick. quick. So pull Joe Rogan. Uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> three hours. Three. We could keep going. Like this feels like we just kind of just started. Literally, but. In order to get us back to doing the jobs that we're paid to do, we're going to call it quits. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching or listening. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you liked what you heard. If you did, like, share, subscribe to the channel, comment below, let us know what you think. We're always looking. We're always trying to improve. Is there something you guys would like to see come out of New Tracks? Yep, exactly. What do you guys want to see? No, We're We're, we're here. We're, We're are a company of the people. So let us know. people for the people. Yes. Okay. So let us know. Do all that stuff, and um, and if you have any questions about formulas, put it in there. I'll pass it on and, and see what Eli yeah, says. Put another thing on. Let's his get a plate. message board yeah. going on or yeah. something. Yep. Come know? on, guys. Um, other than that, guys, thank you for watching, and thank guys, you guys thank you so for joining much. us. Thank you, thank you, Eli. And, uh, Thanks. Fucking we will see you guys next on, time. Yeah. Peace. Peace.